It's time to bless Israel. Hey everybody, I'm Ron Kanner, the Regional Director for God TV in Israel, and today I'm going to be sitting down with Emma Abbott and Fergus Scarf, and we're going to talk about some of the things we actually do to bless Israel. We bless Messianic congregations. We build bomb shelters. We stand with the people of Israel. You make that happen. So at any time during the broadcast, go to the address on your screen and stand with Israel. Thank you so much for partnering with us. We love you. We bless you. God bless you and welcome to this special Bless Israel presentation where Emma and I are joined by the Regional Director for Israel and President of Shalano TV, Ron Cantor. God bless you, Ron. Welcome to the program. Why is it so crucial to start 2022 blessing Israel? Well, you know, the Bible says that the gospel, it's from the Jews, John chapter 4. Uh, Paul writes in Romans that it is to the Jew first. And to be clear, that is not a... a, 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 a ladder of who's more important. It is more God's system. The Jewish people brought the gospel to the world, and now he says to the Gentile believers from every nation, now go back and win your brother. Mm -hmm. Go back, because he's fallen away. He's going mm -hmm. through a difficult time, so go love on him and bring him back in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you, you know, the first time I heard about something like this, I think it was Pastor Robert Morris. He started uh, a little church called Gateway in Dallas, that was once a little church. I think they served with 25 people. And from the very beginning, they, the first check of every month was written to Israel Ministry. Wow. And I asked him in an interview a few years ago, uh, actually, he was telling me in the interview that mm. he was asked at a conference to explain why they're so blessed. 35,000 people. W what is their secret? What is the formula? How do I get a 35,000 member church? And he said, I was embarrassed. I don't, you know, I, I didn't know what to say. And he went to pray, and the Lord said to them, to him, tell them it's because you put Israel first. Wow, yes. that's incredible. And you know, Ron, our, our partners, all of them around the world get so excited when we come uh, to the time of year where we bless Israel. Amen. It's such a wonderful campaign with such brilliant, brilliant projects supported. Can you tell us a little bit about the Pro-Life project that we're supporting again this year? Yes, in fact, it's one of my dear friends, Sandy Shoshani. She is also an American Israeli who married a native-born Israeli. Her husband, Oded, is a native-born Hebrew-speaking pastor in Jerusalem. Wonderful family. They have a million kids who all love Jesus. <laughs> and she began, because there is no pro-life movement, or wasn't in Israel. It, like much of Europe, it's just like, mm. yes, of course, that it's, a, it's abortion. Who yeah. would be against it? Wow. And so they started very small, and they have crisis pregnancy styled centers, mm -hmm. and they have saved so many babies. So mm. in one of our previous campaigns, we raised a lot of funds, and we blessed them with that, and they meet with women who, who, who are struggling because, you know what, at the end of the day, the human being knows that it is not natural Amen. to end a pregnancy. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes we sear our conscience, and uh, but there's a lot of women out there, they don't want to do that, but they don't know to whom they can turn to. Yeah. And so Sandy is there with her team, and I've been in their offices, they've got baby clothes and baby food and diapers, and they don't just counsel these women to get them mm. not to abort their babies, then they take care of them. Uh, they help them uh, uh, to have their babies adopted if that's what they want. Mm. And so there are babies who are alive today. They're no longer babies, by the way. Some of them are 10 years old wow. that they would have been aborted. And, and, and you guys did that. You guys from all over the world, God TV partners, you sewed into this pro-life movement in Israel. In, in Hebrew, we say ba'ad chayim. Yes. Ba'ad is, is uh -huh. for something, chayim is life. Awesome. Ba'ad chayim. Very good. Wow. God TV family, your donation to bless Israel at this time will help unborn children come to life and the mums that need that support to receive that support through your generous donation. Now we're about to go to a VT, but before we do, I'd love you to give our God TV family an update on Shalanu TV. Absolutely, well, Shalanu, uh, as you know, we came on the air just under two years ago. 
to great, uh, I'm going to say fanfare. <laughs> noise. <laughs> the noise. Uh, we were very well known for, right from the outset. Uh, I'm not going to say we were popular. And we were on cable channel. The, the, no Messianic Jewish network has ever been on cable TV preaching about Yeshua in Hebrew. And we did that for just over two months before uh, we were shut down. But we knew that. From the very beginning, I told Ward, I said, listen, I, I don't know why they're letting us on TV, but we're not going to stay on TV. Let's be ready when they shut us down to go digital. And that's what Christ we did. Yeah, amazing. And the beauty of it is that through uh, Shalano TV, uh, like my, vid my uh, testimony in mm -hmm. Hebrew, 37,000 Israelis have seen that. Wow. Uh, and, and, and other testimony videos like that as well. Yeah. We could not have done that on cable. You know what it's like to have an obscure cable channel that nobody ever watches, yeah. but we got all that free publicity. Yeah. And now, and it's not just my video, we took Dr. Michael mm -hmm. Brown's, and, and, and Dr. Brown is the most brilliant Messianic Jewish apologist in the world, hands yeah, down. That's incredible. But he's not fluent in Hebrew. So what we did, he's fluent in biblical Hebrew, but mm -hmm. it doesn't work today. It's like it's like speaking King James English, <laughs> and somebody's like, Some what? of us still do that, <laughs> but moving right along. Right, right. And so uh, we have an Israeli there named Reuven Daron, who is a fantastic preacher in his own right, beautiful, Hebraic, strong, deep voice. And he's taken Dr. Brown's materials, answering Jewish objections to Jesus, yes. and he does them in these short shows. And again, uh, because of your gifts, we're able to promote these. And with all the tools and social media, you can say, we want this to be shown yeah. just in Israel, Amazing. just to Hebrew speakers. Amazing. And Tens of thousands mm. of Israelis are seeing these videos. So Shalano is doing amazing. But also, you know, the great thing about having it online is that it's not just available in Israel. Jews right. all around the world can get hold of this fabulous content and they can make connection as well with Shalano TV. Right, and not only that, uh, we are getting ready to unveil, I'm hoping by before, just, you know, we're into the new year now, mm -hmm. by the end of January, that we will have our new platform. It's wow. the first ever Hebrew English Netflix type platform wow. with all of our content. And now we're not just going to have Hebrew content on there, but you'll be able to click the EN and you'll be able to hear these Israelis. You'll be able to read subtitles. So you at home, you're going to get to see what Israelis are seeing and you're going to have Israeli ministers ministering to you. They probably never dreamed that they'd have that opportunity. Yeah. And I'll tell you what's funny about that. When, when I first moved to Israel, it was just so hard to find Hebrew content mm. that was good. Yeah. And, and because there weren't many teachers, we, we were all young and new, and now more and more young Israelis. We have a young guy, Dr. Eitan Barr. He's like the Israeli Mike Brown deba <laughs> debating rabbis. We have his stuff on there. So now not only do we have content for Israelis, but with subtitles, we're able to minister to you as well. God TV family, we have an incredible opportunity right now to start our year right by sowing a generous financial seed into this Bless Israel campaign. Now, Ron, would you help us? There's a wonderful video that you're about to show us so that we can understand. Emma and I and the God TV family, tell us about this piece. Yeah, well, we did this eight-part series in wow. Jerusalem, and it's called The Jewish Aversion to Jesus. Because a lot of Gentiles all over the world who love Yeshua, mm. who love Jesus, they don't understand why Jewish people don't. Mm. And there are very real reasons. So what we did is we took our time and we explained it. We're showing it all throughout the Bless Israel campaign. Wow. I'm not sure what episode this is, but I know it's going to bless people. Wonderful. <laughs> Shalom, everybody from Jerusalem. I'm Ron Kanner. Behind me is a 5th century basilica. There's just so much to see in Jerusalem. And it is interesting that slowly over time, churches began to replace synagogues all over the city. And that's really where we want to continue today. We're talking about the Jewish aversion to Jesus. And we talked in our last episode about the Jewish revival that took place all over Jerusalem. In fact, the Bible says that a great number of leaders, this is in the Gospels, put their faith in Yeshua. And then in the book of Acts, it says a great number of temple priests gave their hearts to Yeshua. So Jewish people were believing, but then we talked about Peter and, and, and the Acts 15, and Gentiles began to come into the kingdom, and they started to greatly outnumber the Jews. Again, which is great. We want more Gentiles to find the Jewish Messiah. But what changed? That's what we want to talk about in this episode. It really started 
just 20 years after the resurrection of Yeshua in Rome. You see, Claudius, in the year 49, the emperor of Rome, he kicked all of the Jews out of Rome. They, he did it because of, a, according to Suetonius, he was a historian, he said that he kicked the Jews out, Messianic Jews and traditional Jews, because of a guy named Crestus. Now, till this day, nobody knows who this Crestus is, but it sounds a lot like the Greek word Christos, which is Greek for Messiah. It's believed by scholars that the reason Claudius kicked these Jews out was they were fighting about whether or not Jesus was the Messiah. Now, for Claudius, he himself was a god. He was a deity, at least he thought he was. So, you know, these Jews, they believe in one god. Now they're fighting over this, G get out of my city, is probably what happened. And then five years later, Nero in 54, he allows all the Jews to come, ba ba come back in. The, probably the only good thing Nero ever did. He becomes a psychopath and begins to persecute the Christians just about a decade later. But he lets the Jews back into the city. And according to the great uh, English theologian, David Paulson, they were not received into the body. You see, when the Jewish people left, they took something very precious with them that only they had. They had the word of God. They took the Torah, the writings, the prophets, and the Gentile churches, they did not have a Bible. You do understand that when Paul writes Romans, he's writing the Bible, the New Testament. So they didn't have Romans before he wrote Romans. So when the Jewish people leave, they take the word of God. They're exiled from the city, and now the Jewish leadership in the early congregation, certainly in the Roman congregation, they're gone as well. They've been exiled, and now these Gentiles have no Bible. They continue to meet, but during this time, it would appear, if you read the book of Romans, and again, this is a scholarly view, it's not just mine, the Gentile believers in Rome developed an idea, a theology, that God was rejecting the Jewish people. God was judging the Jewish people. God was now against the Jewish people. And we see that all through Romans. That's what Paul is combating. That's why he says in Romans 1, the gospel is to the Jew first. And then in Romans chapter 9, he says, Romans, I want you to understand something. I would be willing to trade my salvation and go to hell if only those of my own race, the Jewish people, would receive the Messiah. In chapter 11, he asks very clearly, has God rejected Israel? And he says, using the, the Greek, the strongest Greek words, no, may it never be. I like the King James, it says, God forbid. How can God reject the Jewish people whom he's made so many promises to, right? Yet, that is exactly what happened, that rather not the rejection, the church believed that God had rejected Israel. And then Paul pleads with the Gentile church, the Roman church, which would become, in short order, the head of the entire institutionalized church. He pleads with them all throughout Romans 11. He says, yes, a blindness in part has happened to the Jewish people. But verse 25, do not become arrogant. Do not become conceited because God wants you to understand the mystery. What mystery? That Israel's going through a hard time, but in the end, God's going to remove the blinders. She's going to come back. Mass Jewish evangelism. In fact, the the, the Hebrew is kod Yisrael Yivashah. All Israel will be saved, verse 26. And that's going to happen as the Gentile church begins, verse 11, to provoke Israel to jealousy. So did that happen? Did the church repent of thinking that it replaced Israel? Well, I think you might know the answer to that. But if you don't, join me for episode six. God TV family, don't miss the opportunity that we have as part of this Bless Israel campaign to start our year right with a generous financial donation. Go to God.tv or call the number that you see on the screen. Now, part of your generosity will be rewarded. Ron, <laughs> you have generously donated your book to God TV. Tell us about it, that we can get an e-copy with our donation. Sure, it's, it's the 10th anniversary. About 10 years ago, I went through a, it was kind of a dark time. I, mm. I wasn't really sure what God would have me do in Israel. And the Lord just kept encouraging me to write the book, write the book. It was a book called Identity Theft. And it was a teaching book about how Yeshua's identity was altered to basically erase his Jewishness. I finished the book. I sent it into the publisher. And that night I put my head down on my pillow and the Lord began to deal with me and say, you have to rewrite this book. Mm. 
Writing a book is a little bit about like pregnancy. And when you're done, you're done. You don't want to go back into that pregnancy. <laughs> and I was like, no, God. And he said, no, you have to rewrite it as a novel. And he says, wow. if you do that, you're going to reach so many more people. Amen. And I hesitated over the weekend. And then I sat down with my daughter, Danielle, and I told her the idea. She said, Dad, you've <laughs> got to do it. So I started writing, 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 writing. I woke her up after a few chapters uh, at about noon when she wakes up. She was a teenager at the time. <laughs> we wouldn't know that. <laughs> no. <laughs> right, right. And I said, just sit down and listen. I'm going to share with you. Daddy's going to tell you a story. Right. And I start reading it. And, and there's a moment that, again, I don't know anything, Fergus, uh, about writing novels. I've never written a novel. And there was a moment, though, that I thought, if this is good, people will cry. Mm. At this moment. And so I get to that point and my daughter burst into tears. And Emma, I burst into tears because I couldn't (laughs) believe that she was bursting into tears. And so we finished writing the book and I sent it out to to a bunch of leaders. One of them was Dr. David Stern, a a scholar. He edited the Complete Jewish Bible. And I thought he was going to write back and say, this is nonsense. You've taken a holy topic. (laughs) But he wrote back and he was moved. And he said, this is incredible. So we published it. And the results were amazing. Three months into it, an Israeli contacted me. And he said, I read your book, mm. and I am now born again. Wow. And I am still, that's 10 years ago. We're still in contact. And God TV family, Lord. God TV family. Don't miss this opportunity. Not only do we get to impact some key projects here through God TV and the Shalano TV outreach, but... Well, the Lord has a gift for us all, and there is a point when it's guaranteed that we will cry. Thanks so much, Danielle, for getting up at noon. But there are other things going on, aren't there? There are, and I think I am going to give a generous gift to Bless Israel so that I can get that book. I would have given you one anyway, Zemma. Now, what I really love about every single Bless Mm. Israel campaign that we do is there's always something new to give into. There's always a new outreach project, and I'm really excited to hear a little bit more about the uh, orphanage that is in Kenya. Can you tell us a bit about this one? Yes, it's called Shalano Kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a dear friend in Kenya. He is an Ethiopian Jew, and his name is Joash. And a lot of folks may remember that in the late 80s, early 90s, Israel airlifted tens of thousands of Ethiopians in secret missions. Mm. And in fact, they broke the record for human beings on a 747, wow. over a thousand in one flight. <gasps> Gosh. And they took out all the seats. People had babies on the airplane. It was incredible. Wow. And it was all done in secret. In fact, my wife and I, we had no idea. My first trip to Israel, I landed with the Ethiopians. Wow. We didn't find out until a few days later in the news. Joe Ash couldn't get out. And about a few thousand other Ethiopian Jews couldn't get out. And they fled because there was violence there. And they fled to Kenya where they lived in refugee camps. Mm. Then in around 2008, there was unrest in Kenya and many Ethiopian Jews were murdered. Mm. Uh, many, sadly, the women were raped and then they got AIDS and they, and they died. Mm. And there were kids who were left without parents. And so Joe Ash, he ministers to these kids. And so... Uh, we said, Joash, we want to get behind this. Mm. We want to cover it 100%. Mm. We're going to feed them. We're going to clothe them. We're going to build Praise homes for God. them. We're Praise going to minister God. to the mothers. And when I say mothers, we're going to minister to widows in, in inner healing, life, love, victory, so that they can then be mothers to these orphans. Mm. 62 of the orphans are from Jewish background, and there's another 80 that are from Kenya, but we love them all. We're going to be there later this month to to just love on them, to hang out with them, to do some teaching. We just want to change their lives. And so we, Shelano Kids Orphanage, it's just amazing. Uh, uh, Ron, would you take your camera and invite the God TV family to give to the Bless Israel campaign? Absolutely, friends. It, It means so much. Uh, When you give to the Bless Israel campaign, not only are you changing the lives of Jewish people and Arabs, by the way, in Israel, but here are these Jewish refugees, orphans in Kenya. They don't know where their life is going to lead. And there are orphanages that are just horrible. And there are orphanages where somebody can grow up to become president. We want it to be like that. And in order to do that, it takes finances. We want to educate them. We want to love them. So I'm asking you right now, go to the address on your screen or call the phone number and give to the Bless Israel campaign. I'm going to send you my book, the ebook copy of Identity Theft. But don't do it just for that. Do it because you love these precious little kids. Do it because you want to see Israelis come to faith. And Paul says when Israel accepts the gospel, it's lights out. 
well, that's not what he said in Greek. He <laughs> said that it will mean life from the dead Amen. and a greater riches revival. So do it right now. Don't delay. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, yeah, I want to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it later. Do it right now. Pick up the phone now. Go to the website now, and you're going to change your life. Amazing. God TV family, we have an extraordinary opportunity. Don't miss this chance to start our year right, to bless Israel, the land and the people, and these extraordinary projects. Ron, Emma, and I'll be right back right after this. Start 2022 right by blessing Israel. In the book of Zechariah chapter two, God says, he who touches Israel touches the apple of my eye. In Genesis chapter 12, God says, those who bless Israel will be blessed. We invite you to start 2022 right as we begin the new year fulfilling the mandate of Scripture to bless Israel. Your gift will make a difference in the lives of Messianic ministries all over Israel. It will support and empower them to reach their people with the good news of Yeshua. It was the Jewish people that first spread the gospel all over the world. Let's give back by being a blessing to Israel. Your gift supports the ongoing mission of God TV across the globe, reaching people on air, online, and on social media. And now, through Shalani TV, Israels can hear the gospel spoken in their own language. Be a blessing to Israel today. Call the number on your screen or visit God.tv now. Welcome back to this special Bless Israel presentation with myself, Emma, and our Regional Director of Israel and President of Shalana <laughs> TV, Ron Cantor. Ron, um, Israel in many ways has actually been out of the news recently, yeah. but can you give us an update on life on the ground? Yeah, well, uh, as you remember, it, it, it's so funny. There was a war, in, and by funny, I don't mean hilarious, but mm. there was a war in May, and it mm. seems like 10 years ago, but it wasn't. It was just six, seven months ago. Mm. And uh, I landed, I had been here in the U.S., and I came back to Israel on May 10th, and it's 5 p.m. in the afternoon. I'm on the airplane, I'm checking the news, wow. and it says in the news that at 6 p.m., Hamas is going to declare war on Israel. Now, I'm... I'm not the sharpest guy in the world, but I could do the math. And I'm like, I'm landing at six. Oh. So they were going to divert our airplane to Elat, the southern, uh, we have an airport down the southern uh, coast of the of the Red Sea. But we did end up landing, rented a car, and me and my daughter and son-in-law, we drove to Mitzpeh Ramon, if you ever get to Israel, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. And then we had to make our way back to Tel Aviv over the next week. And it was crazy. There were bombs in the sky. There were, there were, and I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie, so I, 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 I kind of get into it. But my kids are like, "You're nuts!" And we, we finally get to my in-laws, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and we stay there for Shabbat. And and they live in a small neighborhood. Now, if you're in a small neighborhood and the bombs start going off and your siren doesn't go off, you're safe. Because we have the technology to, to know that even though you see bombs in the sky, if your siren isn't going off, it's not going to hit your neighborhood. So we're watching in we're watching the Iron Dome come up and take out these bombs, and we're recording it, and we're it, it's really a sur just, surreal thing. Just, just a minute, You're, you are telling me that the people that we're reaching through Shalanu TV, the ones that we hope to bring the hope of the gospel and the reality of Yeshua, mm -hmm. are living in a war zone. Yeah. For, and you're taking over sort of blase, the, oh yeah, they're overhead, don't worry, the siren's not got your name on it. What's it feel like? Uh, there's grace. There's a lot of grace. Because honestly, in and of myself, I'm pretty much a coward. Yeah. And like, if you ask me, you know, hey Ron, do you want to go off to war and fight? I was like, no. But in the moment, there's grace and there's mm. courage. And and I, I had never feared for my life. Wow. But when the war was over, uh, I said to Ilana, let's go down to Ashkelon. That's mm -hmm. where she was born. I, Ashkelon is, is right, right next right to Gaza. Yeah, yeah. They took a thousand hits. Now, when I say I ha they were they were targeted a thousand times, and even though the Iron Dome is great, it's mm -hmm. not perfect. Mm -hmm. My mother-in-law's building has two big holes in it. Wow. Uh, my brother-in-law, all the windows in the entrance were blown out, and so we went down and we made contact with the mayor, and he welcomed us in. It was really crazy. We, I, 
I didn't even know if he'd want to work with us. We walk in this room, there's like, it's like a table twice the size of this and there's food and drinks and they honored us. And I said to him, I said, listen, Mayor, I, ha I have to tell you something. We want to help you, but I am a Messianic Jew and I represent God TV. And is that going to be a problem? And he said, Ron, I don't care if you're a Muslim. We need help. Wow. And so we began to work with him uh, through Shalanu, through God TV. And uh, we raised over $100,000 to wow. renovate bomb shelters. Wow. Because when these kids, they might go there at 11 p.m. at night and they might be in there until the morning. Oh. There's nothing to do. And if they go back out, then they hear the siren again. They have to run again. 30 seconds, 15 seconds maybe between life and death to get to the bomb shelter. So we're putting TVs in there, video games in there, carpet mm. couches, and it's been great. And then he introduced us to the leader of the Ethiopian Jewish Community Center in Ashkelon. Mm. So in the middle of the war, they might have 50 adults in there. That's what they do during the day. Their Hebrew isn't great. They're in their later years. They don't go to work. They come there. They hang out. They do games, program, things like that. And when the sirens would go off, they had nowhere to run. Wow. If somehow that took a direct hit, it, 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 you're talking about 50 dead people. Yeah. Oh. And so we said, we, we, what do you need? He said, I need a 50-man bomb shelter. Wow. So we started raising funds again. And I said, what are these computers? They're like 100 years old. We're going to give you 20 of those. Wow. And what else do you need? Well, the kids need tablets. They come over after school. They need 80 tablets. Mm -hmm. So we raised funds. Uh, we're getting ready to break ground on the on the 50 man bomb shelter, which will, by the way, while while there isn't war, it will be a classroom. So it's not just sitting there by itself. Uh, 20 brand new state of the art computers wow. and 80 tablets for these kids. Ron, you've amazing. got 30 seconds. Ask our viewers to be involved. <laughs> Friends, it, get involved. We we need your help in this. I want this to be to your account. Do you understand? I'm never worried whether or not we're going to raise the funds. We always raise the funds. God is always faithful, but I want you to be a part of it because when you begin to bless Israel, Amen. God cannot help but bless you. It is written in this book. I will bless those who bless thee and I will curse those who curse thee, speaking about Abraham and his descendants. So get in on this. Go to the website on your screen, pick up the phone call, make a generous donation, change your life in Israel. Amen. Isn't this amazing? It is. And I just I love that this, this campaign, above all other campaigns that we do all year round, Amen. it has such a humanitarian Amen. impact. Right. This is about real people Amen. on the ground making a real difference in the lives of Israelis. And you have an opportunity Amen. to step in and help. It might be a small child in the middle of mm. the night going to a comfortable bomb shelter mm. rather than somewhere right. that is cold and unwelcoming. It might be a child in Kenya who mm. is getting an education and the right start in life but your money really does make a difference and we thank you it's never too late to get involved call the number on your screen or go to god.tv forward slash give so on behalf of emma myself and ron and indeed the entire bless israel team we're asking for you to give generously to start our year right and impact those most in need we pray that you will respond right now go online or call the number that you see on your screen Start 2022 right by blessing Israel. In the book of Zechariah, chapter 2, God says, He who touches Israel touches the apple of my eye. In Genesis, chapter 12, God says, Those who bless Israel will be blessed. We invite you to start 2022 right by joining with us as we begin the new year fulfilling the mandate of Scripture to bless Israel. Your gift will make a difference in the lives of the Messianic ministries all over Israel. It will support and empower them to reach their people with the good news of Yeshua. It was the Jewish people that first spread the gospel all over the world. Let's give back by being a blessing to Israel. Your gift supports the ongoing mission of God TV across the globe, reaching people on air, online, and on social media with the good news. And now, through Shalanu TV, Israelis can hear the gospel spoken in their own language. Be a blessing to Israel today. Call the number on your screen or visit God.tv today.